Okay, all, and um, welcome back. So today we're going to look at the light cap Perry Miniatures light cavalry box, fourteen fifty to fifteen hundred. Um, so I'll start with the box again. It's like all the other boxes they've done in this sort of range. It's got a nice uh, painted artwork on the front, um, just like the Mercenaries box set. It's got the Burgundies or Burgundies um, <coughs> livery on it. So I would like to have seen a bit more of a kind of York or Yorkshire or Lancashire. Um, artwork on it but you know they've gone for that one it's a nice shiny colour the blue and white offsets quite nicely against the dull brown so it has its um, benefits so this box makes 12 cavalry um, which is fantastic it's, you know you you need 8 for the, the unit in bill hooks uh, never mind the bill hooks um, but 12 in other ones so it gives you a scope you make all 12 and you can play with them on the back again Again, the usual format for these boxes, it gives you a wee bit of what you can build with them. So you've got a crossman archer, uh, I'll see sort of spear slants, um, and then the actual size of miniature here. Now, so like cavalry, you can arm with a mixture of things, different rule sets. Um, they were normally armed uh, with some form of um, projectile weaponry. Um, and again, occasionally they had the lance, it depends what sort of arm you're doing and what, what role you want them to do. Now, so the back is it gives you a wee bit of livery for them. Uh, again, it's more you're a couple of the sort of mercenary sort of ties from Burgundy and France. Um, I again, I'm looking at what I was going to use these for. I'm not really sure yet. I need to have a look at um, what colour lead I'm going to put with them, and then the livery that goes with with the the lord or the the minor. I probably use a minor lord or minor duke to um, to, to, to 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 command these. So obviously, because you don't want to go too far off from your normal ones, um, but. I like um, things like the Duke of Clarence. Um, it's very simple, but then I also quite like Lord Ross. So I need to see who's in my army and what I can need to do for it. But I, I'm going to look for a, a livery that's kind of quite bright, so it stands out against the horses, sort of the browns and the, the blacks of the horses. So I want something a bit more brighter to stand out. So we'll have a look. And obviously, as we get to paint them, we can see. Right, so we'll open it up. And so so here we got that box open. Um, again, you've got manual bases. Again, I'm not using these bases. I'm using the wooden ones from Charlie Foxtrot. Um, I find that they suit more games. You can take them in and out. Um, if you want multi base, it's not an issue. But you've got bases here from if you don't. I'll probably use some of these again. Like if we other ones, I'll use them for objective markers or even scenery. Just the scenery's got a wee little base to move around on. Um, so you get a box. You get the horses and you get the riders. So. Well, first look at the book. Again, like all the, the little sort of manuals they give you, there's some nice ideas there of um, riders and men. Again, how you can do them. So it's for the English bowman to the Germanic trumpeter, down here to the um, Bernese crossman. So it's quite gives you an idea of what they all look like and what you can do with them. And also it gives you a little bit of a history about them, which is quite nice. And I, I do like that with the, the rule books. Inside, you've got, again, a guide to the parts, how to build them. Like sort of Italian cavalrymen, what how's to use for them. Um, Swedish ones, again, mounts crossbow, how you can do it. And then the mount archer up top. More and more looking into these and looking at, I'll probably go for unit mount archers. I think it'd be quite fun on the, on the battlefield to run around, shoot and leg it away. But we'll have to see. And as all of them, again, it's a few banners. You've got a couple of France banners. Sort of one top there's just a typical one. So it's obviously one that seen around doesn't actually go to anybody in particular. But then you've got different companies for Burgundy, um, Burgundy. and then England you've got obviously Warwick, Oxford, uh, Earl of Derby and Banner of St George. Now I quite like the idea of doing like an Earl of Derby or just as I say a lesser known one that won't be in the ward. And then obviously Sweden you've got the different houses there that you can use. And again it might be a case that I might even look at end there of doing them as a, a mercenary force with a mercenary, of a mercenary lord because it would be quite nice to have just a bit of variety in the army. But we'll see how it goes. On the back again, you've got more flags as usual. You've got Switzerland, Roma, and Italy. And, and obviously, what I do like this, it does give you a um, few sites you can use. So the flags, um, the you all in different conflicts, and if you want anything else in the Burgundy Army, there's one about there. But I'll be looking at the Cribspilk.dk, which covers flags in the period. I like the idea of that. I think it will give you a bit more flavour what you can do and what's out there. So bases as normal. These ones are slightly bigger than the average one because obviously they're for the horses. A couple of single horses, a couple of doubles. Um, I think that's a triple one there. 
and then same up here, exactly like same on the opposite side. So the bases again, I'll use them, but probably not for the models I'll be using them. Well, I won't be using them for the models, I'll definitely be using them for scenery and objective markers because the horses will use Charlie Fox truck cut out ones, they just look nicer. And I'm, I'm, I'm not for my base, and I want to keep mine separately so I can take them off or put them on as the rule set requires. So the horses you get obviously uh, four sprues of horses. I'm um, pretty sure they're all exactly the same. Yeah, they are. So every sprue is the same. So look at a sprue. Um, so in this sprue, obviously, you get enough to make three horses. Uh, four different heads, which is quite nice. Three bodies, that's it. So it gives you a bit of play. You can do what you want, depending on how you want the horse to look. Like any, the, the, all the horses of Perry's ever do in plastic, they're really nicely detailed and they paint up really nicely. Now I've done uh, an army for Lion Rampant, uh, which has a lot of horses in. Um, I've got one more unit to finish painting that. I will do a video on that later. I'll go over the sort of uh, the models themselves, um, what I use that wasn't much Perry's in that that was different ones I used in that but we'll have a look at that one so I've got one more unit to paint up and I can show what I'm doing to it and how I've played it so some really nice horses there the heads are quite lovely the heads are the mains that's obviously hollow like normal um, pins to connect the horses together to stay stabilize in bit of glue and it hold nicely and then the horses heads so that's the horses there's four sprues of them there's no variation in them it's just what you've got and then the same for the men you get three sprues uh, of four each and again each sprue is exactly the same no difference in the sprue so we'll just look at one of them and we'll go over what we've got so to start off with the bodies um nice poses standard arrayment obviously they're not men mounted men at arms they uh, they are like cavalry so they're not gonna be a massive scale armor um so we can play with that again looking at the the spears slash poles um you've got enough there to make or them all have poles or to all have um, crossbows. You've also got arrow sacks there, crossbows with the quivers for the bolts. Some of them here you've got crossbow, like this one here has also got crossbow which is not, it's all sheathed in the bag hanging and that's quite nice because you don't have to have them all firing or what you could have is some, you have a mix where you have some of them with the poles but also they also have the crossbows hanging at the side of the horse. A couple of bows there trumpet there um and obviously a fully sheathed bow there and again you've got a wee bow just in the corner here um you've got a, a wee sheath bow but again you can just hang it on the side of the horse you can have the horse riding with both hands or you could have him holding um the pole and that way you've got a few obviously swords up top not really sure what that ring is it oh that rings for one of the um that's for the Italian, I believe. Just look at the walls again. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's for the Italian cavern. A ring at the top. But again, it might be quite nice. You know, you get two two rings that I can see on there. So you can make two Italians on this one. Um, and you've got a little helmet here, which is quite nice on its own. I'm not sure why you'd want that. But there's a few there with soft helmets. So maybe having a, having a... A helmet hanging from the saddle bag would look quite nice. It would give a bit of just a bit of variety to it again. And then the heads. Now the heads, I do like the heads. Um, there's a wide variety of them. Obviously, you've got to make sure when you're building it, if you're going to build Germanic, you go for Germanic, Italian, Italian. And again, if you're going for English, English. And it's just looking at the varieties of different ones there. And what you can do to it. Um, the main ones you're looking at is the ones with the big feathers on. They're the ones that really more donate to different um, sort of countries rather than the English. Um, you've got here, you've got a crossbow there. Um, I don't quite know why he's got this around his head, but he has, but obviously again, they see how it's, he's got it all where it's not armed, he's not shooting, they're just at sort of the counter. And I quite like that on it. I think it's will look really nice. So you've got a wee bit different there. You've got the Swedish knight there, a Swedish helmet there. So it's just looking at what helmets go with it and what plays that's really it for this one again when you put anything together make sure the arms match you know if you've got a male coat give a male coat don't give one arm male one arm knock so it will just look a wee bit bizarre um but again it's all personal choice you know build how you want play how you want so i'll say happy gaming um hopefully i'm gonna look at doing some painting uh probably tomorrow i'll get some ends sprayed up i built already and i'll be looking at um some of the metal models as well from perry's and how they look 
um, and if they're worth buying or is it worth just converting plastic but we'll go update that on the next video so say happy gaming I hope you all do well and stay safe at the moment and we'll catch up with you on another video okay bye bye